Welcome back to Sahara TV. My name is Rudolf Okonkwo. We are continuing our discussion on the ongoing national conference. Uh, every week during this conference, we'll be talking to delegates and giving you updates on what is happening there. And um, now joining us is uh, the spokesman for the Yoruba Social Cultural Group, the Afeni Ferry. He's also representing the group at the ongoing national conference. His name is uh, Dr. Yinka Odumakin. Dr. Yinka, welcome to Sahara TV. My pleasure. Um, let me start. Uh, there's a statement you made in January of this year to the National Mirror newspaper. You said that yeah. Nigeria is falling apart now without us discussing it. It's not, it's not running away from discussing it or sitting down that we will prevent the breaking of Nigeria. In fact, the best way for us to prevent the breaking of Nigeria is for us to sit down and agree. Now, it's been two weeks into this conference. Do you still feel that it's worth sitting down to discuss Nigeria? Oh, definitely it's still worth it. And um, the fact that uh, we've not uh, moved beyond this space in the last two weeks is a reflection of the fact that Nigeria remains an unsettled policy and uh, that we have not made much progress in the last three years. So we tell us that two weeks is a short time. But given the uh, what's happening at the conference, you can see that all the first lines that have made it necessary for us to discuss and talk at this point are shown up at the conference. Mm -hmm. And it's very clear, and I see, you see that unless we discuss these issues, uh, Nigeria is uh, still on the keg of gunpowder. And uh, because even on the eve of this conference, you have situations where children are being killed, we are recording casualties in the hundreds on daily basis, not even in, in, in the Afghanistan or Iraq. Do you recall such deaths on a daily basis? I think it's still quarter to midnight in Nigeria. And uh, this conference, whether make or man Nigeria, we have a choice to make. Now, uh, two weeks is gone. We have 10 more weeks to go. Is there any sense of urgency on the part of the delegates there? Well, I think uh, the problem is mostly we have majorly is the fact that uh, there are school, two schools of thought. Or really, there are two tendencies that are coming to this conference. The first tendency is the tendency that represents the status quo and doesn't want anything to change. And there's a tendency that is eager to make the to restructure the and make it work in a different way. Now we are locked in this uh, grid because uh, there is the, because we know before we went to this conference, there was a conference in Kano by the Kano, the other editors forum, where they took the decision that they are not coming to this conference. For, for, for the whole Nigeria, that committee was clear that we are coming as none of Nigeria, and that is the kind of mindset that we are seeing since this conference has started. But we have been talking across the board. So let's just see the reason why we have to look beyond our small screen and look at the larger picture, because things are not well with this country. Nigeria is at the edge of the precipice, and we should do all we can to pull it back on the brink. If we are unable to do this, the consequences will still die, still die for us as, as the people. Mm. Now, let's look at this issue of the rules. What is the problem? What, is, what did the president say should be the uh, majority that you need to pass a resolution? And what is the problem at the conference now? The president said nothing about what the rules should be for us. In fact, in his inaugural speech, he did not talk anything about the majority thresholds. Indeed, it was the the government uh, uh, Senator Fires Ayin, who, while wrote out the modalities for the conference, long before the delegates are chosen, said that it should be by consensus. And where consensus is not achievable, the threshold for majority should be sent to percent But when the president of the speech, he did not talk about that. Now, when we go to this on the floor of the conference, the question people are asking was that, let us have an example of one country in the world where the threshold for majority is sent percent and nobody has able to bring one. And in fact, if you look cast the mind back, what killed the League of Nations, the precursor to the UN, was this rule of unanimity. Like every member of the League of Nations had a veto vote. And just one name rendered useless any resolution. And the League failed woefully. That was why the United Nations had to take a cue by correcting that mistake by making the threshold of majority, other super majority, or two thirds. Mm. It's only in the Security Council. We are out of 15 members, nine people have to agree, and the five uh, the members have to concur. Mm. But outside that, it's either 
two-thirds of simple majority. Now, if you go by 35%, now, we, yeah, we, we know yeah. two-thirds is typically used in every uh, democracy. Why are people rejecting two-thirds? What, what do you think is the reason behind that? Well, uh, for instance, I, I think I, I had an argument with uh, our, our discussion with Dr. Dina Mohamed on a, TV, on a television media called TVC. And in fact, we nearly came to blows. And the thing I got from him is that, oh, people from the South are insisting on two thirds because they think that they have the numbers. So it is not so. What has happened in this conference is that in the modernity, each state of Nigeria was to present three delegates. Each zone was to present 15 delegates. The civil society labor were all asked to put their delegates and to be sensitive to these geopolitical zones. But, and so, on the basis of states, on the basis of zones, the north and the south had almost equal division. In fact, the north had more, because there are seven states in the north. In the north. There are 19 states in the north and 17 states in the south. So they have six more on the basis of three per state. Now, but where they think the, the, the south may have more, is in the areas of professional bodies. And in any case, if you say, okay, manufacturer association, go and bring somebody. The manufacturers will think that, oh, it's the best, it's the best man that can represent us. Not necessarily where to the south or from the north. But I think that what we are afraid of is that for the first time in the of Nigeria, there are still some appearance of balance. For those who have been used to undue advantage over the years, who have, uh, for the past three years, have used that military might to create Nigeria in their own image, that today, if you go to the House of Reps or the Senate, the Northwest alone can block, can block any resolution, can block any resolution from, from sending through, just by, by shared number, which was created by fiat. So the question today is that the, 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 those who have uh, had undue advantage over the years are now thinking that this appearance of balance may not pay them in terms of stalling the conference or suffering people from achieving the agenda. And I think this is what, what this issue is all about. Don't forget that on this very day, the Lamido of Adama spoke on the floor of the conference that the Sultan of Sokoto went to the president and was saying that, oh, this conference is against Muslims, still against Muslims. Yeah. And citizens of not the same countries 21 years ago where we voted for a Muslim Muslim ticket. Mm. Now, we we're, we going to get, we're going to get yeah. to that. Let me, let me ask you, because right. people watching from outside, they kind of feeling that they're getting is that the members, the delegates, are no longer interested in convincing people that their position is superior, their argument is superior, that basically it has boiled down to fighting over votes. Is that where we are? Is that where we are? Well, I think the, the basic thing that I've seen in, in this issue of uh, the father, Nigeria's situation today is like when you take a cat and a rat and you ask them to go into a room. Go ahead. Odumakin. Dr. Odumakin. Okay, okay, go ahead. When we don't have the same share values, when we don't believe that we should run this enterprise project called Nigeria for the benefit of all, if one section believes that this project should be run solely in our interest, and other people should be second class citizens, it's difficult to find to, to find consensus. And that is why you see hardening of positions. Because when you look at, for, for some of us, the agenda we are putting in this conference is federalism. And that Federalism benefits every section of Nigeria. But some people see federalism as an attempt to take the authority mark from them. They see it as an attempt to take the, to take the bread they are sucking from them. So that's why there's so much hardening of position. But if only we can rise above these prejudices, if we can only be, if we can put Nigeria first, like the present uh, Senate in a project, if in its address, if we believe that this project should be run for the benefit of all. It's not difficult for us to come to some consensus and move Nigeria forward in a positive direction. But if some people believe that we should sustain iniquity, we should sustain unjust system, we should support a system that oppresses some people and encourage a few, that's where the problem uh, is. Okay, Dr. Odumakin, let's pause now to listen to uh, the Lamido of uh, Damawa uh, speak uh, on the floor of the conference. After that, I will come back to you and give you a, a reaction. The larger part of my kingdom is in the Republic of Cameroon. A part of that kingdom in Cameroon is called Adamawa State presently in Cameroon. So you see, if I run to that place, I will easily assimilate. <laughs> but, but 
Mr. Chairman, please, I want to plead to us. Mr. Chairman, I want to plead to us to strictly break the path laid down by Mr. President. All right. Uh, you were there at the conference when he made that speech. And uh, sometime today, yeah. I think, or yesterday, you appeared on a TV channel where you yeah. you said this. Uh, he said that initially, I thought it was Shaku, that is Boko Haram leader, uh, that was talking because yeah. he used the language of Boko Haram. Now, what is sure. your general take on, on his on his uh, statements? The, the, and, and why did you uh, use this reference to Boko Haram? Yes, because that's the number that's number four uh, area in, in the caliphate structure from the north. And it's the number five most senior area in the north of Nigeria. And it comes on the floor of the conference of all Nigerians. And its opening statement was that, let's be careful how we couple with Western civilization. That's the language of Boko Haram. And it went on now to be threatening that in case you do not agree and this thing comes to a head and Nigeria is to debate, some of us have options. My kingdom. That's someone talking within the Republic, except from here to Cameroon, and as if I stayed called Narama in uh, Cameroon, Kuala Damawa, if I go there, I would be assimilated. That stress is us wanting. Because when you look at what, when emergency was declared, not it. The Boko Haram element moves to Cameroon, Chad, Niger, and that's why they are coming to attack Nigeria. Now, if an emir, an important emir, comes and says, Look, I have another kingdom I can go to, it shows clearly that there's an elite content. To what Boko Haram is doing, that will feel that this place can be destroyed because they have somewhere else to go. And like I did say, myself, I'm a Yoruba person. You, there are Yoruba in the Republic, in Togo, in Brazil, in China, and Tobago. I would not want to go and meet them after destroying Nigeria. So I want to go there, I want to go on holiday, I want to go on cultural exchange, I want to go and see the people there for the culture, not because you have to destroy Nigeria to go elsewhere. But if you have that kind of mindset, you think that there's no commitment to Nigeria. And that is why we are having to have become to leadership in Nigeria because the Emir, the role to become a permanent secretary in Nigeria. And if that, that kind of language that will come from him at the conference of all Nigerians, it's most unfortunate. But let me say this. There are another that I spoke, spoke, spoke on the floor of that conference who felt embarrassed, disgusted by the students coming from the Emir. And in fact, after the conference uh, that John and was getting interviews with the media and making those, those kind of family comments, I think it was uh, the former IG of police, Gambuji Meta, that wants to save this on himself by throwing a look on the camera. That shows that they were embarrassed by the kind of statement he was making. Mm. But I think that kind of mindset cannot move us forward. And uh, for the rest of that conference, I, I think the Yenya has lost it, and it's difficult for him to regain the confidence of delegates. Mm. Now, but, but what do you think about this idea of walking out from the conference? Uh, if we've not even started discussing serious issues, people are threatening to walk out. What will happen when you discuss serious issues? It doesn't mean that any group that is now getting what they want will just walk away. Well, I think I have passed the stage of anybody threatening anybody to work out, work out. We are aware that for this conference, there was a meeting in Kano, convened by the Northern Enders Forum, where the school is looking to the that delegates should work out if something is because that's not in the of the North. But I want to assure that, that we are moving beyond that. You remember in 1993, what after the Nahuru motion for Nigerian independence? They are who went to riots. They are not ready for independence. But the, the time of intimidating people has, has come to an end. We must come to this conference to discuss as a nation, as a country of equal nations who have a just state in the project of Nigeria. If anybody decides to walk out of this conference, I can assure that the conference will go ahead. Mm -hmm. And those who, who decide to walk out may be deemed to have succeeded from Nigeria. But if the, the best thing for us to engage in trustful give and take, let us all shed our arrogance, feel that whatever, and come to the table as equal partners and look at how to move this country forward, how to save this country from this degradation, how to put this country back on the track, how to create Nigeria that works. Look, no. in the 70s, mm. in the 70s, Nigeria, Brazil, China, we are ranking in the same uh, industry of development. Where are those countries? Where are we? We are still brought down now with I, I have a kingdom in Cameroon. In 2014, it's most unfortunate. Mm. We should move away from that kind of mindset. Mm. Now, the, the chairman uh, pointed uh, pointed uh, 50 de delegates to look into these rules and come back and kind of uh, help the the conference to agree on it. Uh, the people on, on that list, I looked at some of them. They they appear to be from the establishment. Are you worried that 
you know, if things are hard, that members of the establishment will simply hijack the conference? Well, I think that uh, the, the the committee has met, and if they came to some kind kind of uh, decisions, which they are going to communicate to us on Monday when we resume plenary. But um, I believe that uh, the yes, you are right that the committee is loaded with uh, pro establishment people. But I think this conference has taken a life of its own, and uh, there's nobody anybody can manipulate anymore. Tenor is up at the body, and um, I do not see. Any attempt to man manipulate this conference at this stage will fail because the stakes are quite high and the situation are quite high. We have constituents that come from who are talking to us every minute. So uh, I believe that when we debate their proposal on Monday, the world will know where the conference is standing. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, briefly, can you tell us what is the agenda of the Afeni Ferry to this conference? Is, is there any agenda that you are going to push them? What is it? Our agenda is federalism. There is no way you can run a multi-ethnic mission like Nigeria along military lines and not have stress. Nigeria is under stress today because we have abandoned the federal road. We have traveled this military road for, for something years now, and it's not paying us. All we are having is confusion. All we are having is fighting among the various groups. All we are fighting is under development. All we have is corruption. Because corruption is there today has nothing to do with the structure of the country. We believe we should restructure this Nigeria along federal lines. And the federalism are pushing will allow every, every part of Nigeria to spread the army, to have autonomy. And we believe there are enough resources in every part of Nigeria to make every part of Nigeria to develop. We can create this device in Nigeria if we apply ourselves. But for as long as we live on this rent, rent the economy, take oil receipts, take those who have money to collect their salary, they come become not do what they like to do. We cannot develop because corruption will continue and will not make progress. So our agenda is that Nigeria will be structured and non federal line. Mm -hmm. And that will benefit every section of Nigeria. Not only Yoruba, not only Igbo, not only South South, it will benefit the North, the South and everybody. But for as long as people believe that they can only prosper under iniquity, then they will not want to accept that kind of agenda. Now, now it's easy to say federalism and, and people are uh, for people from the the south, but for people from the north, they argue, uh, especially the recent thing that we had that the oil in the in the south south actually belongs to the north. How do you convince someone who holds that position that federalism should be good for us, that that is good for everybody? Well, I think we have been making all kind of ridiculous statements, and I think those people, I think it was Usman Bugagi. That made the same thing. But before him, the late of Allah Usman had made those slaps me say under Abacha that the fact it was the, the bones, the, the, the marrows of the cow bones from the north that went to the first that became oil in the place. I think that's a very difficult statement. Look, for me, today I, I stand for this capitalism. For one thing, because I do what's good for the people of Uganda. In the French Republic, when cocoa was the main thing of Western Nigeria, we did not fight cocoa to South South. We did not let people take cocoa to South South for them to sell. When oil, palm oil was in the east, there was no pipe that took uh, uh, the palm oil to the South South. Granite was not piped anywhere. We believe that God, in his infinite wisdom, has given resources on, on, on the soil of, of every part of Nigeria. I can tell you today, Niger State is known. There are resources in Niger State. I've seen a report that show that Niger State has enough resources that make it richer than Niger and Chad combined. Those are two countries. But nobody is tapping all these things because of the oil receipts. So the agenda we are asking, the kind of mindset we need, is the mindset that everybody will apply themselves, go under their soil, take resources, and we pull resources together to develop the center. And even in our agenda, we have said that we should move through some, uh, only some, some, some period of, of transition. Why? Maybe about 10 years to use resources to develop many other resources in any part of Nigeria before we embark on full fiscal federalism. Mm -hmm. But unless we do this, for as long as we, we, we stay on this rental economy, collecting rent from oil, we don't add value to it, Nigeria will remain poor. It's only corruption that will try as only the elite, the few elites that will continue to make it at the expense of the masses, the masses of Nigeria. Now, um, you told the National Mirror uh, in January that any attempt to go yeah. into the federal election in 2015 without restructuring Nigeria will lead to war. Um, do you think, uh, what do you think will happen if this conference fails to restructure Nigeria? If this conference fails, then 
the sasa is at the door. Because Nigeria today is not only me, it's not a state of war. Nigeria is at war. Like I told you earlier, even in Afghanistan or Iraq, you do not record 200 dead on a daily basis. They are bringing body bags every day, children are being killed, and all the fault lines are showing up and on the eve of the national elections along religious lines, along ethnic lines. If we do not, if we not reach a consensus and we go for the 2016 elections, I can tell you that we are preparing for war and we are pretending that we want to hold the elections. Because it's that election that will organize Nigeria. Because I saw where you can hold a peaceful election in the midst of the women that are configured, in the midst of the stress, in the midst of the tension, in the midst of the deep divisions that is at stake. If you look at that conference, so if we agree on to use to put her wherever there's him or he or, or, or she where there's he, it took a lot of debates. People are coming with hiding positions. The lines are widening. And when the Sultan in the midst of this conference is sending a message to the Muslim, oh that this government is still against you. So how for, for goodness sake, next if, if the, this conference fails and as soon as the session of the country has translated the conference, how would that session bring the pressure candidate next year? And that's just of the country to vote for such a person. Muslim Northern votes cannot make anybody president of Nigeria. Christians Northern votes cannot make anybody president of Nigeria. So how do you get people to support each other across the line if you do not ad address these issues? That's the basis of making that statement, and it stands valid even as we speak today. All right, uh, Dr. Uh, Odumake, one last question. Mr. What, what will you consider a success uh, at the end of this conference? I think what I consider this success at this conference is that uh, we do not have to reach consensus on all issues. So we shall be on the fundamentals to agree that Nigeria has not worked and to look at the reason why Nigeria has not worked and propose solutions to get out of this doldrum. If we succeeded in taking Nigeria out of this wood, to put Nigeria back on the brink, to agree on templates that will make Nigeria to work, that will make different sections of the country to be happy, that will stop the killings going on, to stop the, the, the deep divisions and heal the wounds in the land. And now we can apply the resources of Nigeria for development and the corruption that's going on at the moment. I will consider the conference as being a success. I believe that this is not the last conference. There's where well other conferences. And this conference will not solve all, of, all our problems. But we will not be able to solve any of our problems if we don't get this conference right. All right. Uh, Dr. Yinka Odumakin, thank you so much for joining us. Mr. My pleasure. Thank you. One week. When we come back, we are going to continue our programming today and uh, stay tuned because we are still going to have, give you the chance to talk to us when we take the Skype calls on some of these topics and some of these guests that we have today. So stay tuned.